So all of you involved with ISSA or that receive our media publications, concentrate on cleaning, disinfection, sanitization, something to do with caring of buildings. But how often do we think about integrated pest management as part of the program we might engage as a cleaning professional and how those uh, bugs that could get into the buildings may impact your work? Well, today we have Jennifer Gordon with us. She's an urban and medical entomologist and her company is Bug Lessons Consulting. Hello, Jennifer. Hey, Jeff, how are you? I'm good. You are in San Francisco, I believe. I am, yeah, it's a beautiful day here. You know, it's not too foggy, wonderful temperature. Yeah, I don't know if that's always the case. <laughs> wonderful yeah. temperature. <laughs> you know, you know, San Francisco, I tell people for the most part, for me, it's probably about 65 to 70 degrees. Uh, I just came back from Northern Indiana and when people, you know, find out I'm from there, they're like, oh, it's so cold. And, you know, in the summer, all I can think is, no, it's so hot. <laughs> Sure. Hey, I like that name of your company, Bug Lessons Consulting. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. So we hope to get some of that consulting from you today. Tell us, how did you get into this? What brought you to the world of insects? Sure. Yeah, a lot of people ask that question. So uh, I'm an entomologist by trade. So I study insects and, you know, insects are diverse creature. And they really are just one of my favorite things to talk about. And when I was a little girl in Indiana, like I was just talking about is where it all started. My grandmother had a big side yard and I'd go out there and I'd catch grasshoppers and crickets and bees and spiders. And, you know, that love of insects really, you know, stayed with me. I ended up going to Purdue for undergrad and I'd kind of deviated away from the the insect train for a little bit and was, you know, all thoroughly in journalism. And I had to take a science class and they offered entomology at Purdue and I took it. And within six weeks, I'd switched my major. And that was well over 15 years ago. And I haven't looked back since. So as a child, you were grabbing all those bugs. You know, when I think of that, I think of like the old Dennis, the menace cartoons where there's bugs in the pockets or cr critters. But um, so if a spider comes into your area, you don't panic like most would. No, not at all. You know, we're going to talk about IPM, you know, today a little bit, but one of the questions I, or stories I like to tell people is I remember I was cooking once in my house in Wisconsin and I saw something out of the corner of my eye and I'm like, oh my gosh, is it a cockroach? What is it? And I looked and realized that it was just a spider. And when I thought it was a cockroach, you know, I was about to like take action. And once I realized it was a spider, I'm like, oh, that's okay. It can just keep, it can keep living. You're a rare breed, Jennifer. Rare breed. <laughs> Thank you. And that's, that's a compliment. Uh, let's talk about what matters most to our ISSA members and those who subscribe to our publications. Uh, what should they know about pest control? What are some top of mind topics? Sure. You know, when I think about pest control, you know, the first thing is really, you know, to, to try to approach it in an integrated approach. And integrated pest management is a, a science-based approach to pest control. You know, it is all about surveying for the pests, you know, what do you have there, identifying what they are, and then partnering with the pest management professional or your facilities manager to really develop a, a plan. You know, prevent the insects from coming in, utilizing multiple techniques to, to keep them out. If they do come in, you know, how to keep, you know, make sure you end up getting them out of the building and then constantly assessing the effectiveness of that plan and, and modifying it to make sure that, you know, you're still providing the most uh, effective control possible. And then, you know, especially as it relates to ISSA, you know, sanitation and maintenance play a really huge role in integrated pest management. You know, we're going to talk a little bit, you know, about what I think when, when I encounter an insect, but, you know, the first thing to think about is why is that insect in there? So when you're thinking about sanitation and maintenance, you know, eliminating attractive conditions, are there food or water sources that that pest is trying to get at? If there are, you know, figuring out where they are and making sure that they're gone, uh, reducing clutter, you know, pests are really looking for places to take refuge to harbor. So if you can get rid of a lot of clutter, then you're getting rid of a lot of places that pests can potentially, you know, hide out in a facility. Uh, preventing insects from getting in. So again, this is good maintenance. So looking for cracks and crevices around doors and the foundation of building, uh, putting in door sweeps at the bottom of doors. Again, you know, keep those insects out and make it incredibly difficult for them to get in. And then surface disinfection, you know, surface disinfection is incredibly important. You know, pests can physically and mechanically spread different pathogens that can make people sick. 
or lead to food spoilage. So proper sanitization and disinfection are, are really key components to you know, having a good clean facility free of pests. Great information. Let me ask you this. When you find bugs in a building, what's the first thing that comes to mind? I believe you have a series of thoughts here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I generally try to ask five questions and these questions, you know, come to my mind, whether I'm dealing with the pest in my own home, because they definitely happen in my own home, or if somebody's reaching out to me, you know, about trying to develop a protocol or in a facility. And, you know, the first question is, what is the pest? You know, it's incredibly important to know what species you're dealing with so that you can solve it. You know, I think a lot of people would know that there's a pretty big difference between a bed bug and a stink bug and, you know, the level of care you want to invest in that to eliminate those problems. But, you know, knowing the species can be a little bit more subtle. So like, what's the difference between a German cockroach and a three lined cockroach? You know, one of those pests is a public health pest that, you know, you need to be working with a pest management professional to solve. The other one's an outdoor critter that, you know, probably just accidentally got inside late summer and does not, you know, necessarily need as big of a plan to get rid of. So knowing the species is incredibly important. Uh, the next question, you know, I always try to ask is, is how did the insect get in? You know, did that pest get in by hitchhiking on packages and deliveries? Um, did it come in on a person? Did it come through, you know, one of those cracks and crevice openings that we were talking about? Did it, you know, follow plumbing and wiring? And that's important to know because that's how you can fix the problem. You know, if you're getting pests in on your deliveries, maybe you need to develop a protocol that's going to prevent pests from coming in. If it's just, you know, an accidental critter that hitchhiked on somebody's shoulder, you know, just pick the bug up and, and get rid of it, you know, squish it, you know, however, however you need to get rid of that, that pest, but it's important to know, you know, how did it get in so you can fix that problem. Um, kind of along the same lines is, is why does it want to be there? You know, is there something attractive that it wants to eat or drink? Is it looking for food and water? Is it trying to gain shelter? You know, is it the summer months and it's hot and dry outside? So the pest is now seeking indoor refuge to get away from those you know, bad weather conditions. Uh, again, is it an accidental introduction? You know, there's a good chance that whatever the, the critter is, you know, it doesn't want to be there any more than you want it to be there. So really understanding why it's there, again, helps you solve that problem. You know, I think that the biggest question that most people have is, well, how do I get rid of it? You know, depending on what the pest is, that can be a relatively simple answer or it can be more complicated. You know, in general, I recommend developing a really good relationship with a pest management professional. You know, work with them to create protocols to get rid of the pest and then prevent it from coming back in. You know, you might physically remove the pest. You don't necessarily have to use insecticides, but sometimes insecticides are one of the best courses of action to eliminate a pest. And then finally, you know, how do you prevent it from coming back in? And this kind of goes back to that, you know, building maintenance and, and sanitization that we were talking about, you know, figuring out how it got in there, closing off cracks, um, using caulk. Caulk can be one of your best friends. Installing door sweeps, um, changing your behavior, you know, depending on, for example, you know, where you store garbage can be important, you know, instead of keeping it up on your facility, actually moving it physically away, you know, create some barrier between your building and the pest. Um, installing traps, you know, it's really important to get ahead of a pest infestation. So by installing those traps and getting a, a good indicator before, you know, the pest actually becomes an infestation is important. And then again, you know, developing that relationship with your pest management professional, I think is really key in preventing pests from, from entering a, a facility. I know in the future, we're going to talk about individual bugs and pests and some of their characteristics. I look forward to learning about some of them. Uh, some of them, maybe we don't want to talk about too much, but... Uh... Huh. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things sometimes that people don't want to talk about a pest and then all of a sudden when they've got it, they have a lot of questions. So, you know, some of the pests we talk about, I hope that, you know, your folks will never encounter them. But if they do, you know, there are solutions and, and ways to overcome and solve that challenge. Yes.